Hello there, I'm the 14th Lord, and I'd like to introduce to you what I like to call my Video Game Legends Corner. This is where I'll tell you a bit of gaming history, but I won't be focusing on companies, consoles, or video game series, but instead, I'll be focusing on people who helped shape the gaming world to what it is now. Today, I'm going to be starting with one of Nintendo's legends, Gunpei Yokoi. Perhaps one of the most influential people in video game history, Gunpei Yokoi, is largely forgotten about in this day. With figures such as The Sims Greater Will Ride or Valve's Gabe Noel having today's spotlight. Yokoi is most famous for being the inventor of the D-pad, but he's also most infamous for being the creator of Virtual Boy. So today we'll be seeing how he got such a divided repertoire among the fan base for one of the more, most famous creations in video game histories and one of the most infamous. Today though, we'll be looking at his history and many more creations that stem from Yokoi that you might not know about. Inventions that still affect the video game market to this day. Born on September 10, 1941, Yokoi would graduate Doshisha University with a degree in electronics before being hired in Nintendo in 1965. Back then, Nintendo had yet to enter the video game market and instead focused on producing Hanafuda playing cards. History was made in 1966 when the then current president Hiroshi Yamachi came to inspect the factory Yokoi was working at. In his free time, Yokoi had manufactured a simple extending claw as a toy and was playing with it during his lunch break. The toy had caught Yamachi's interest. You may know this toy by its name, Ultra Hand. This marked Nintendo's switch from the car company into a toy company. In 1970, Yokoi was promoted to the head of the new game and setup department, which would later become known as Nintendo Research and Development 1, before being replaced by the Nintendo Software and Development Division in 2003. Yokoi would go on to design 12 more toys released by Nintendo all the way to the 80s when he was eventually placed to design video games exclusively. While working in games and setup, Yokoi was in charge of scouting out and hiring new talent for his team. This included Masaki Yomura, who approached Yokoi wishing to sell solar cells for his company's Sharp Corporation. Soon this solar cell technology would be used in Nintendo's Beam Gun game released in 1970 and the laser clay shooting system in 1973. The technology would be used for the arcade game Wild Gunman before eventually finding its way inside the much more well-known light gun for the original Nintendo Entertainment System. Uemo was eventually hired by Yokoi in 1971 and would soon find himself head of the Nintendo R&D 2. In 1979, while traveling on train, Yokoi noticed a bored passenger filling with a LED calculator simply pressing buttons to kill time. This sparked an idea in Yokoi to produce a watch that could also play video games using simple LED technology that would be cheap and portable. In 1980, the first of the Game & Watch series was released to great financial success. This sparked a long line of 60 separate games all the way till the 90s. Nintendo had been interested in expanding beyond Japan and entering the growing arcade markets of the United States and hoped to do so by exporting some of their hit arcade titles such as Radar Scope, Space Fever, and Sheriff. Unfortunately, these games did not catch on and left Nintendo in a dire shape with many unsold game cabinets. Nintendo was in desperate need of a new arcade game idea so that these cabinets could be reprogrammed and sold. Gunpei Yokoi approached Nintendo's current president, Hiroshi Yamachi, with an idea developed by a young unknown apprentice developer named Shigeru Miyamoto. With Yamachi's approval, Yokoi was assigned to develop Miyamoto's idea. The development of this new title was an interesting one. Miyamoto was constantly thinking far beyond the capabilities of arcade cabinets of the day, and Yokoi was giving him realistic ideas what could actually be done and programmed. In 1981, the game was released and became a hit that you might have heard of called Donkey Kong. In 1982, Donkey Kong would be re-released on Nintendo's new Game & Watch series. During the process of bringing Donkey Kong to the Game & Watch, Yokoi felt the simplistic design was insufficient for a game of such scale that made the intention of pushing arcade cabinets to their limits. Designing the small screen wasn't enough, Yokoi designed this Game & Watch to use two screens in a design that any current owner of a DS or 3DS would find very familiar. It wasn't long before the D-pad became a staple with many developers of Game & Watches wanted to make use of it. The popularity of the D-pad only soared after the design was adapted into the original Nintendo Entertainment System. Miyamoto and Yokoi would work together again in development of Mario Brothers. Yokoi offered Miyamoto several ideas that would become a staple of the entire series. Most notably, the ability for Mario to not just fall without taking arm, but to also jump great superhuman distances. While experimenting with the game design, Yokoi noticed the game had many floors that the enemies would cross. The idea came. Why not make Mario able to jump and hit blocks from under to defeat these enemies? 
Miyamoto and Yokoi decided that this was a little cheap though, and they finessed the idea so that afterwards, you'd have to run over them to score the kill. The concept of a turtle was used, as it made the most sense. What else could become helpless when it was knocked onto its back? Besides cows. Though cows might have developed Mario in a whole new interesting direction, Yokoi would continue as a key figure in many Nintendo series such as Metroid and Kid Icarus. While developing the Game Boy, Yokoi noticed that the competition would incorporate colored screens, but opted to use a more simplistic black and white design. Well, more like a green and darker green design. This was used as Yokoi felt that the color technology was too new, making it costly and fragile. He believed that this design would also promote a long battery life that would make a Game Boy far more portable than the competition, and he was right. The Game Boy proved highly successful, but the Virtual Boy loomed on the horizon. Yokoi envisioned the Virtual Boy to be a unique console difficult for others to compete with, but ultimately the project was rushed out in 1995 and the quality was reduced greatly in an attempt to cut costs and give time for Nintendo to focus development on the upcoming Nintendo 64. Even with Nintendo cutting costs by reducing the Virtual Boy to only black and red, the Virtual Boy sold in the United States for $180, or $280 after inflation as of 2014. Nintendo cut the price repeatedly, but no price cut could save the Virtual Boy, and it was discontinued shortly before Nintendo 60's was released, with only 1.26 million units sold worldwide. Gunpei Yokoi envisioned the Virtual Boy as a final gift to Nintendo before his planned retirement to explore his own personal interests, but the failure led him to stay with Nintendo a little bit longer so that his departure did not come off as a bitter defeat. Yokoi helped see the completion of the Game Boy Pocket, which would become his final goodbye gift before retiring and forming his new company, Koto Laboratory. Sadly, on October 4th, 1997, while driving upon an expressway with a co-worker, he was involved with a car accident. Two hours later, Gunpa Yokoi was pronounced dead. That's the end of how Yokoi came and left video game history. Koto Laboratory still exists to this day, making games and products, but few of which makes its way to the West. Miyamoto continues to work with Nintendo, having become one of their most notable figures. The D-pad is now used in almost every modern gamepad, with few exceptions. Who knows what the video game enterprise would look like to this day if not for Yokoi, or whether or not Nintendo would even have entered the video game industry. All I can say for sure is, even if Yokoi might have passed, his legend still lives on. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it very informative, and I'll see you again next time. Ciao.